Hello, beautiful people. Tis I. Today, I want to chat with you about all of the books that I read in February. There are 10 of them. I had a really amazing reading month. So I want to dive in. I want to do it slightly differently. I saw someone on Book Talk um, talk about the books that she read in a, in a given month. I can't remember what month. Doesn't matter. She ranked them from least likely to recommend to most likely to recommend. And I think that's what I want to do this month. But the book that I am the least likely to recommend to you, at least for this month, is The Scourge Between Stars. So this is a sci-fi book. We are following Jacqueline, who is on a spaceship. Um, she is a part of a, a group of people moving to another planet. Earth is no longer safe. I think she must have been born on the spaceship because this is going to take a few generations to get to their destinated place. Um, and she is suddenly the captain. She's very reluctantly the captain. Her father is staying in his room and will not come out. And so she keeps going to him like, Dad, you know, we need you out here. And it becomes more and more apparent that he is needed. People are upset on the ship. There are uprisings. And then suddenly there is an intruder on the ship and there are these AI like robot things telling her that there are things on the ship that shouldn't be there. I will say I was so excited about the premise of this book, but it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. Like it, it took so many cues and even scenes from Alien that, um, like the first Alien at least, that it just felt like I had seen this before, I had read this before, I knew the story. And I was just kind of disappointed by it, to be honest. I also really wasn't as tied to the characters as I wanted to be. Yes, I cared about Jacqueline, but there were a group of people around her that I feel like we should have gotten to know more, including her girlfriend. And like, I just wanted to know more about more people so that I cared when people died. And I felt like I wasn't as invested in the characters as I should have been. I also wasn't enormously blown away by Idol Burning. I thought I was going to love it because this was on so many of my favorite booktubers like best books of 2023. So I really thought I was going to adore it. Idol Burning follows a super fan, which is an understatement. Her name is Akari and she tracks and follows basically every minute of her Oshi's life. So her Oshi is um, someone she like admires to like the next level. He's a member of a band and at the very beginning of the book, you find out that her Oshi has struck someone, struck a woman, and it looked like uh, it was a fan. And he is not overly apologetic about it. And it is about how that impacts her as a person. And when I say she's obsessed with this person, she truly is obsessed. She has a blog about him. She has friends who are also online who have their own Oshis and are obsessed in their own way. And they have this very interesting community. Now I found her extremely frustrating, I will say. And in some ways I feel like that's really good writing because you, the author really does make you feel something for her. For me, it was just frustration, um, a, a little bit of sadness for her, but I feel like I wish I had more sympathy for her at the end of the day, I just, I wanted to have more sympathy for her and care about her a little bit more. But I, I, I don't know, maybe I just have a cold heart. But I, I didn't. It was a very interesting exploration of fandom. Now we're moving into books that I, I genuinely like, but I just literally had to rank them from like least likely to recommend to most. I would still recommend these books, but um, the next one is The Last Graduate. This is the second in the Skolomant series by Naomi Novik. We in this world are following a girl named Elle. She goes to a school along with her schoolmates where there are no teachers. Um, there are courses that they have to take 
um, but there's no one to help them along the way and they are very um, hesitant to trust one another because there are murders that happen in the school. The school itself has creatures in it that seem to want them all dead and Elle is in a situation where um, she has a hard time creating um, enough energy for magic uh, to do little things like mop the floors of her room. But she is so powerful, she could destroy the world in a second. She just, she doesn't want to do that. She's a good person. So, she, but she has a really hard time summoning the magic to do smaller things that all her classmates seem to have no problem with whatsoever. And you find Elle kind of reluctantly starting to trust other people in the school. And it goes from there. I really have loved the series. I have one more book to go. I will be sad when it ends because that's the end of the trilogy. Um, but yeah, I think I liked the first book better just because you're first introduced to the whole strange world of the Skullamans. The next book I want to chat with you about is The Last One by Will Dean. This was my first Will Dean and will not be my last. This follows a woman named Kaz, I believe. Yeah, she is in her 50s and she gets onto a cruise ship with her boyfriend. Um, they go to sleep one night and she wakes up the next morning on the cruise ship that they've set sail and her boyfriend is nowhere to be found. She goes out into the halls and no one is to be found. She is searching far and wide for people on the ship and she can't find anyone and she's gonna try to figure out how to navigate the ship alone what she's going to do I really enjoyed this book and I feel like there were twists in here that I did not seem coming see coming there were also um challenges in here that I really enjoyed that she had to complete which were absolutely like so nerve-wracking watching her trying to complete these things um totally puts her life at risk multiple times in this book also really loved that we had a main character who was in her 50s that was such a lovely thing i feel like so many times in thrillers we have younger um heroines and i really love having some older heroines especially 50s why is it that we seem to only read about people in their like 20s or like maybe like end of life talking about their life. I don't know what that is, but I really liked her and it was hard to put this down because you just want to know what's going to happen in the end. Night watching is next and my goodness, you guys, if you want to be on the edge of your seat reading a book, pick this up, especially the first half of the book. We are following a mother who is home alone with her two children. She's putting her son back to bed. Um, he's like a toddler, I believe. And she looks down the hall and can see the figure of a man in the hall. No one should be there. It should be just her and her kids. Someone has entered her home. It's in the middle of a blizzard, I will add. And she's looking at him and realizes, oh my God, he's going to see me. But um, she has a nightlight in the hall and she knows that she can see him, but he can't see her. And so he, she has to gather her two children and put them in a like cupboard area behind or underneath the stairs, I should say. It is hidden away. Only she and her husband knows about this area. She has to put them in there, keep them quiet while there is a man, a terrifying man, storming around the house, not looking to rob them, but looking for them. And he seems to know them. So terrifying. Truly, I, I have not read a book like this in a while where I was like, um, especially when you have a child at that age, you know, it's so hard to keep a child quiet. Like you might think that it's easy, but it it is not easy to keep them quiet. Um, and I just can't imagine being her in any case. 
Um, so much of the book, you are with her, um, trying to keep her children alive. And then uh, towards the second half of the book, you follow her outside of the situation. And outside of the situation, people are questioning her. And as they're questioning her, you start to question her. Did everything happen the way that she says that it happens, the way that she explains in the story? It is absolutely a wild ride. I will say I was hoping for a little more depth. Like this would have been five stars easily. If there was just a tiny bit more depth, it was very like plot driven um, character as well. But I just wish there was tiny, tiny bit more depth. I can't wait to see what Tracy does next. I think this is a debut and wow, what a debut. Amazing. Uh, the next book I would very much recommend that you read is nonfiction. This is 4,000 Weeks, Embrace Your Limits, Change Your Life, Time Management for Mortals. The whole concept of this book is that if you live the average age of the North American or European person, you have about 4,000 weeks in your life. And it's, it's so interesting when you say it that way, because I think when we think of years, if you said to me, I have 80 years in my life, I'm like, that's so much time. Like I have so much time. But if you say I have 4,000 weeks, that suddenly seems like a lot less time. And the point of this book is to put your life into perspective. Um, it, it's to obviously say, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but also to make you realize like, really we need to stop working so damn hard and stop focusing so much on that because on your deathbed, you aren't going to be thinking about the campaigns that you helped create um, or whatever you do for work. You're not going to be thinking of that. So it, it, it's essentially saying we need to construct our lives and our time in a way that is... Um, reflective of the values that we have and what we want to do with our lives. The other thing I really liked about this book is that it speaks about time and how we all seem to think that we have this hold on time, that we can use it, shape it in a certain way. And there's this idea that we have control and we don't have any control over time. And that was really interesting. It was also really interesting, like towards the end of the book, talking about how like the universe doesn't really care about us and how insignificant we are. And that might terrify a lot of people. Um, but it actually can be quite comforting if you think about like the mistakes that you've made in your life. And I'm not talking about like murdering anyone, but like how many times have you like dwelled on a mistake and let it consume your mind? But what if it truly is insignificant and we're just, it just doesn't matter? And like, it really made me feel a lot better. I so highly recommend reading this book. I highlighted the heck out of this. That's what I do with my nonfiction. I know so many people would be horrified if they looked at my nonfiction books. Uh, but uh, that's my thing. So definitely would recommend that. I also read two books from the Maisie Dobbs series. Uh, book 10 is Leaving Everything Loved Behind. Oh, no. So book 10 was Leaving Everything Most Loved and book 11 was A Dangerous Place. And we're following Maisie in a really difficult time in her life. This is the hardest we've seen Maisie go through it. She's gone through a lot in her past, um, but this is her at her lowest. And First, she leaves and I believe she goes to India. She also goes to um, Spain and you are following her trying to get her life back together. I just so highly recommend this series if you like mysteries, but if you love history, this is just such a perfect series for you. I'm learning about history in such a fun way. It takes place between World War I and World War II. We are moving into World War II now. Okay, two more books to recommend. Um, I absolutely adored Death of a Bookseller. This was incredible. We follow two characters named 
One is Roach and one is Laura. So Roach is very into true crime. She has actually created a true crime section in the bookstore that she works in. Uh, she's quite obsessed with it. Uh, spends most of her time thinking about serial killers and reading books about serial killers. And she meets uh, another bookseller named Laura, who comes on board to kind of spruce up the shop she has been sent from head office, her and a few other people, to make the bookstore more of a success. It's, it's struggling. And Laura is um, a wonderful bookseller, does really, really well with customers, um, but she has a past that's very, very sad, a very sad past. And Roach uh, learns that Laura is interested in true crime. She's at least reading a true crime. Laura hates true crime, but she's reading it for a very specific reason. And it's um, to kind of exploit, not exploit, but to expose, I should say, true crime for what it is in the, in the sense that it can be absolutely uh, misogynistic, really um, holds up serial killers on a pedestal and completely forgets the victims are actually people who lived, who had goals and dreams and aspirations and families and all of those things. And she really doesn't like it for that reason. And the two clash. Um, but Roach becomes quite interested in Laura because she thinks that they're going to be buddies. Roach, I will say, is one of the most infuriating women I have ever read on paper, ever. Oh my goodness. I wanted to smack this girl so many times. Um, and just tell her to leave Laura alone. I loved that aspect of it. I loved that we really explored true crime here. And why is it that we, so many people, um, have an obsession with it? And what is the way to create true crime in a way that's respectful of the victims? It was a really interesting book. It was funny at times. I loved every second of it and I didn't want it to end. Last but certainly not least is The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson. I adored this book. We meet Ted and Lily at an airport. They are waiting for their flight and they get a drink together at the bar. They don't know each other, but they get to talking and Ted kind of opens up about how his wife is cheating on him. He's had too much to drink. <laughs> It's not something you just go in with, like, hi, I'm Ted. My wife is cheating on me. He, he kind of reluctantly says it over time. And Lily is very upset for him. And she says to him, you know, why don't you kill your wife? And he kind of puts it off and I'm like, oh, ha ha. Yeah, that would be great. And then over the course of the drink and then over the course of the flight, he realizes she's quite serious and he starts wondering if he's going insane but kind of interested in this woman and they begin to have conversations about this over the course of this book. I will say this is so twisty turny in the best ways. You feel like you know somebody and then you realize you do not know somebody through it um, and it, it does shift perspectives. You read from Ted's perspective and then you read from Lily's perspective and you find out like with Lily, uh, how do you become a person who goes up to someone in an airport bar and recommend that they kill their wives? How does that happen? You find out in this book. I absolutely adored it. This is apparently a series. I picked this up because I have pre-ordered the third in the series. So that will be released I think in June or something like that so I need to read the second obviously but now I know I love it and also now it's like official Peter Swanson is an auto buy author for me 1000% I love him uh and those are all of the uh the books that I absolutely loved from least likely to recommend to absolutely most likely to recommend I hope that you have enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below, what is the book that you read in February that you would most 
like to recommend to me. I would love to know what that is and I will talk with you soon. Bye guys.